Hey guys, it's G. Let's talk about mixing your mic powders. So I'm going to be using a generic brand of mic powder and I'm pointing this out because this will behave differently to the higher end mic powders like this little piggy or Perlex. Now I'm also going to be using a transparent paint uh, to tint my mic powder further. For a dispersant, I'm using liquid excess pouring medium, a high gloss pouring medium. And for my base paint, I'm using an Emulsion Base C. I'm pointing out that this is Emulsion because you should know Emulsion paint and enamel paint behave very differently. Water-based enamel paint is based on the original oil or alkyd-based enamel, which self-levels. This is what we try to mimic with Float World. And the new water-based enamel paints uh, behave the same way. The enamel paint, on the other hand, actually dries clear if it's not if it's not tinted. So when you use mica powders, it's very vibrant. Emulsion, on the other hand, is not, and you'll see shortly. And on top of that, this mica powder has pretty terrible pigment. So don't be surprised by the quantity I'm using here. If you're using this little piggy, this amount can fill up half this cup. So now I'm going to add the liquid pouring medium as a dispersant. What you want to do here is add just enough liquid to wet all the mica powder. Okay. And this is actually one of the prettiest thing you, you can look at because it literally looks like molten metal being mixed in a cup. Let's actually go in for, for a close up on this. Look at that. Look at how crazy that looks. So with your dispersant, you can use pouring medium, you can use uh, varnishes, the uh, acrylic polymer varnishes like the ones I use in my pouring medium. You can use polyacrylic, you can use water-based polyurethane like Josonia. Uh, if it's a water-based product, you'll be fine, but you want to water it down because you really just need it to wet the mica powder. This is not the body of your paint yet. So be thorough in the mix and now we'll add some of the base paint and this is why i pointed out this is a generic mica powder when you add the base paint it's going to lose a lot of vibrancy and this happens with emulsion base paint because base c it it's not very clear it doesn't actually dry clear if you don't tint it it's kind of milky so it's going to lose a lot of its tinting power and that's why i'm going to add some transparent tube paint and you want to use transparent semi-transparent tube paint because opaque paints will completely drown out that shimmering effect in the mic powder okay so we'll mix very thoroughly the base C paint is quite thick this mix will need to be watered down and you can use your same pouring medium or varnish to water it down and perhaps even add a few drops of water to get to the right consistency I'm not even really going by recipe here I'm going by consistency uh, and I'll, I'll show you what the mound and trail looks like. All right, so let's use this in a painting. I'm gonna do a little bloom on one of the tiniest coasters I've ever seen. I don't think this thing could even be a coaster. Then, if you're watching this, this one's for you. So on top of this mix that I just made, I've added a neon blue from Arteza, fresh out of the pre-mix bottle. And I'm using Sheldon's cell activator recipe that is watered down float roll, two to one. And then that mix is three to one with the paint. Okay. And let's blow on this and see what happens. The neon from Arteza, as you might know, is uh, semi-transparent. So the, our, our mix of mica and the cube paint should cut through a little as we blow out the petals of the bloom. That looks good. Let's give it a spin. Yeah, that's pretty good. That worked out well. Yeah, do you see those white dots? That's usually the base paint bubbles in the base paint cutting through. Uh, the way I fix those is just poke them with a toothpick. Just 
push that white paint in. All right, let's, let's try a slightly bigger coaster. And what I've done here is I've thickened the Arteza Premix paint. Uh, I've added my own um, blue metallic paint to it, which thickens its density and makes it opaque. And I've mixed in some base C paint, so now it's a much thicker density. And let's see how this affects the bloom. So we'll add our metallic neon blue on top of the mix that we had made with the mic powder. Now, I, I hadn't done this on purpose when I was making the video, but it wound up looking like Golden's uh, Cunag, if you're familiar with that. And that's uh, Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. One of the funnest words that you can say fast. <laughs> and yeah, so now I'll hang back, put on some music, and let's see what happens with this bloom. Wow, this turned out pretty good. I think it would have been a little bit better if it was semi-opaque as opposed to fully opaque. Like, I would have liked our quinacridone color to cut through a little better, but it's not bad. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.